Hi, it's Candy with The Art of Planning, and I'm real excited to do this video because I have had a lot of requests about it. A lot of people ask me on my page markers for my binder if I use die cuts, and yes, I do. However, you do not have to, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So, let's go ahead and get started. Um... I'm going to show you how to custom make them. I'm going to show you how to custom making them kind of on the inexpensive route. I started to say cheap, but I don't like that word. And I'm probably going to show you how to make them using something that you already have in your stash. So, how many of you have these little guys? These are 6x6 six six paper pads. I cannot tell you when the last time I bought these was however I cannot tell you either how many of these little guys I have I have a way too many so last week I was kind of going through some of those and if you watched the last video you know that it was on making pockets and I took that a step farther and I thought you know I know everybody wants to know how to make pocket pages um, as page dividers as the yeah page markers in their three ring binders and I know there's a way to do that without having to have dies so I just started dinking around a little bit and try and trying that so here's what I want you to do I want you to think about or after we do this part of the video go grab a six by six cardstock book that you got okay anyone just any of them I had not used a sheet of paper out of this until I started on this little project okay I didn't touch this I didn't use anything but whenever I decided to do this I thought okay I wanted to sit down pick out some coordinating papers that I thought would go together and then start the journey on making some page markers that would go into my Franklin Covey classic size binders that I just handmade and didn't use any die cuts for okay so that's what we're gonna do so you guys have the basis of this already if you watched the pocket making video which is just the one previous to this so you got some knowledge there already okay so pull out some paper pads that you want to work with and I'll show you what to do I'll tell you what to do. I'm going to walk you through part of this, okay? So, for instance, as you're making your selection, just you know, just do anything you want to do. You'll notice, you'll notice right here. Let me take some of these. I just put some little tabs in there. Okay, so here you see a stripe and kind of a little vine piece of paper, okay? Now, what I wanted to do, too, was show you, okay, Here's the same vine piece of paper right there, but then I used it with like a little cherry blossom. So you're going to see pattern repeats because there were several pattern repeats in the book. So here I used the bright orange dot for the backing. Here I used the bright orange dot for the actual pocket. So you can just mix them up any way you want. This rose color I thought was really cool mixed with the dot. So again, you can just mix them up lots of different ways. As a matter of fact, if they are in a 6x6 book together, there's probably no wrong way for you to do it. Just pull them out and see what you think you like, okay? So just as kind of another idea, here's like floor planks in the turquoise and brown color. And then this is like a barn door pattern. So you can mix those together and do your pockets. So you've got your six by six and you've got your six by six here also. Now I'm gonna try to remember everything that I kind of decided to do whenever I did this. One thing was, even though these are card stocks, they're just a little bit on the lightweight side. And I don't like lightweight when I'm working with pockets. So what I did was I backed the pocket back and the pocket itself onto white cardstock that was heavier. So here's what they end up being. I put this 
on a white cardstock back and I put the pocket on white cardstock back. You do not have to do that. I decided that I wanted to. Okay, that's something that you will want to think about as you do this. The other thing that you'll want to think about as you do this is you will want to think about how it's going to fit in your binder. Do you have a Franklin binder in a classic size which has seven rings? Is that what you're using? Are you using a classic binder in a compact size that has six rings? Is that right? Um, what binder are you using and how many rings does it have in it? So give that some consideration. This, I don't want this to sound overwhelming. I am telling you the things to consider right off the bat that took me time to work around last week. It's not going to take you time to work around because I'm telling you that, okay? Those are things that you're going to want to consider, okay? The other thing you want to consider is you want the top of it to stick up probably, what's that, maybe... I don't know how far up that is, above your page line because it's going to be a page marker. So you want it to stick up above the page line, right? So you're going to make a pattern and you just want to think about, oh, I don't want it to come exactly to the top of the page. I want it to go up a little bit more. So. You have a page right here. All you want to do whenever you're going to figure out the holes, which will be on the other side, is you don't want to mark your holes like this because then your page marker will end up sitting just even with the top of your page. You want your page marker to go up a little bit above the page. So when you're making what I call your template, you just want to make your template probably, what is that, probably three quarters of an inch above your page. So this is what I started out with. Well, I must have cut the top off of my template. <laughs> my template started out being six inches tall by four and a quarter across. In a rectangle. It didn't have the notches in it whenever I started. Okay, so here was my template. Six across, no, six high by four and a quarter across. That is the template for every single back that I did. Six inches high by four and a quarter, by four and a fourth across when it fits in your Franklin Covey Classic size. And then it's going to fit above, like this one does. And it's going to fit above, like this one does. And it will fit above, like this one will. See? Now, it's got fewer holes than this one does, but you're making it out of a six inch piece of cardstock that comes in your six by six book that you've got tons of, if you're like me. Okay, so your template is going to be six inches tall. And then because you know that, you're going to be able to make yourself a template very easily because you're going to take any sheet of paper. Well, that looked easy. Okay. You're going to take any sheet of paper. You're going to put it like that, and then you're going to say, okay, I want it to go above that a little bit. And you also want to consider where your holes were going to be. You don't want the bottom to end up halfway in between a hole. You want it to be above or below a hole. So this is a pretty good spacing right there. You have enough room up here. 
you are in between a hole right there so you flip this over if you want it to be above that much and on your template you start to draw little hole circles right here and then when you're done you end up with a template that is going to like be like that and that's how you can mark every every single template from now on okay I hope I hope you've got to see most of that. So you have a template that will work for you when you're making the back of the pocket. Now the other thing you want to consider is how high you want your pocket. And you make a template for that. Now I decided to make two sizes of pockets. I decided to make a taller pocket and I decided to make a shorter pocket. And you do the same thing whenever you're doing that. You want the pocket to be positioned where you have enough holes that the pocket lands at a nice space for the larger pocket and also for the smaller pocket. So you can see when you're fitting the template I know that's hard to see with the white background, but you can see whenever you're making the template for the larger pockets, you position it where it lines up with the back pocket and where it will line up nicely to fit in your binder. And then the same thing with the smaller one. Like that. Okay, I don't know if you can tell. I'm working from the other side of the tripod again. I'm just trying to get that figured out. So, you end up with a back pocket template, with a taller pocket template, and then with the smaller pocket template. And then just to be sure <laughs> that I think I've got everything, I put it on a bright sticky note so I can remember and I just paper clip everything together. Because when I'm doing a lot of them together, I just, I just have to help myself remember. So, here's what happens. I make all of my templates I'm cutting out I know what goes with what here is a back pocket that I haven't gotten done because I actually cut out six pockets one two three four five six but I wanted to be able to show you I have got the craziest little hole punctures here and sometimes I like it and sometimes I hate it and then, because I've got them marked, I go here and I punch and I punch. Now, I didn't show any of the cutting on the screen because I figured you got that from the video that was previous to this one. So there, my holes have been punched for the back of the pocket. And then here we're going to punch them. And, you know, again, make sure you might have something on your paper that you want to be at the top. Or you might have something you want to be at the right side of it. So just, you know, be aware of that as you're doing your designs. I mean, this isn't all-encompassing terribly important. But, I mean, you're doing a project and you're spending your time on it. So if there's a certain way you want to make it work. Just be aware of that. I always have to be aware of how I use these little guys. Okay, so this is how that pocket will be. Got them punched out pretty decently. The other thing
that you'll want to be aware of. This is kind of how we where we ran out of time before is this is where I like to distress them before I have attached them together. So I would go in and distress all of my edges right here. I use vintage photo and then you will be able to see how everything is distressed. All of the edges. Then when I put them together, a lot of times I will use the art glitter glue. And then another way that I like to put them together is with this tape that is double-sided tape. I really think that works well too. And then after you put them together, you can get out your embellishments and use those on them. And then I did mark this because I do kind of like the corners tapered like that. So I use my template to mark those. I will cut those off. So now we have a nice tab. This has been adhered and then we'll have another fun pocket to decorate and I mean these are all coordinated you could use them in the same group you could use them in the same binder you could give them away as a as a nice gift I mean that would be wonderful and you will be able to see that in addition to the fact we are just about to run out of time once again I'll flip it in here you'll be able to see it and oh I'm sorry I didn't mean to do that I am going to ask dear friends, um, the thumbnails on my videos have been terrible lately. I am aware of that. I'm in the process of fixing it. Um, and I know many of you watch anyway. That's not a big deal. But I think it could discourage people who are not aware of the channel to not watch. So please don't hesitate to send your friends to watch because I'm in the process of getting those thumbnails fixed. So, did you see how perfectly that will fit in that? You do not have to do any die cutting at all. If you had any questions about measurements, please let me know. Um, I did go through that fast, but it was either that or breaking it into two videos. So, you now know how to make a page, a pocket page marker for your ring dividers. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, leave them. I will be happy to answer any comments. And thanks so much for watching. You guys know I appreciate you so, so, so much. Thanks, and I'll see you soon. Bye.